Now, returning to Jerusalem, it's a somber day with thousands of Israelis taking to the streets for the funeral procession of Rabbi Shalom Cohen, the famed rabbi and religious leader to the Haredi political party Shas, passing overnight at age 91. Joining me with more is foreign affairs correspondent from the Chadre Haredim website, Yanki Farber. Yanki, it's great to have you. Thank you so much. Now, tell us a little bit about the late rabbi and his legacy, not only for Shas, but for Israel at large. Yeah, well, uh, he was the 91, and, you know, and the Orthodox community, and, you know, elder you are, you know, more older you are, then you have much more respect. And he replaced the previous rabbi, Rabbi Yovadi, in 2013. He wasn't that popular like Rabbi Yosef. Rabbi Yosef was popular to everyone. You know, everybody in Israel knew about him. He was involved in politics. He was involved in leading. He was involved in um, everything. Um, this rabbi, Cohen, was more into studying Torah. Um, he, he cared less about politics. He, only, he was only involved in when he was, you know, when he was actually forced to be involved because he always said, I want to study Torah. I'm not really into politics. But he understood that he need, that, you know, the Sephardic community needs a leader. Um, what's called, you know, when Rabbi Yosef was uh, at the head of Shas, uh, you know, the spiritual leader, the head of Shas, Every Wednesday, every weekend, he gave a speech, and there was a, he opened the news with the things he said. Rabbi Cohen was um, more quiet in politics. He wasn't involved. He was um, very, very, uh, you know, people really admired him. Even not the Sephardi uh, community, everybody. You know, today I heard many rabbis from the Ashkenazi uh, um, people, you know, from the Ashkenazi party say, uh, how great he was in, uh, in Torah, in Judaism, in everything. Now, the Sephardi community are in a little problem because they, they didn't appoint somebody instead. Because, you know, in the Orthodox community, you never appoint someone uh, before the, the one that is leading is actually passing away. Now, if somebody will replace him now, probably someone age 95, you know, older than Rabbi Cohen by himself, Rabbi... Uh, uh, by Adani, he's like right. 95, he's not very well, well, but he's probably going to be the next uh, uh, Shas leader. Hmm. And what's going to be after that? Good question, because uh, probably when uh, Rabbi Yosef, the chief Sephardi rabbi, will finish his term, he might become the next uh, leader of Shas, next because he, he speaks like his father, he's like very popular, and you know, when he dresses with the nice uh, top clothes, like nice top coat, what his father used to wear, you know, the rabbis, the clothes, the gold one, he has gold on it. People really like it, and he, and he, you know, and he encourages them, and he makes them happy. They love watching it, and then maybe he's going to be the next one. All right, well, so I, I want to ask you a little bit more about Rabbi Cohen's uh, activities politically, because as the head of Shas, as the head of the Shas Party's religious council, and again, you said that he wasn't as political as maybe other leaders in his position, but he was very vocal, and famously, he was a staunch critic of the Lapid Bennett coalition, uh, as well as their religious affairs minister, Matan Kahana. Also, he rallied hard against a, a potential merger between United Toward Judaism in 2019 and Shas. Is this the level of political activism, is this level of political activism rare for someone in Cohen's position? Because again, it seems to me like he was fairly active, as opposed to your earlier comments. Yeah, he, he was active, but he wasn't so active because mm. I tell you what, he always said to Arya Derry, you know, the leader of Shas, the political leader of Shas, I trust you, you can do whatever you want. If you have a problem, mm. if you want to ask something, you're welcome to ask me. But he gave him much more, uh, you know, I would say freedom to do whatever he wants in the party. Rabbi Yovadia Yosef was much more involved. Many politicians, prime ministers, and a president they came to visit Rabbi Yosef and they listened to him. Rabbi Cohen was a little bit less involved because he always gave freedom for the people in Shas to do whatever they think wow. uh, uh, to do. So, yeah, he was involved, but he wasn't so involved. So, uh, now, United States Ambassador to Israel Tom Nides also sent in his condolences. Uh, what, what was Rabbi Cohen's influence or importance to the Jewish community abroad? 
Well, he met, he went a few times. He didn't go a lot, you know, outside Israel because mm. he was quite old and it was a little bit complicated. But he, I remember he went to Mexico not, uh, a few years ago. He met with the community, it was the Jewish community in Mexico. He wasn't going out much. As I said, Rabbi Yosef was more involved also outside Israel. Rabbi Cohen, as we say, he was less in the newspapers, he was less in, in, in you know, on the news. But he was very involved in the Sephardi communities around the world. I just spoke to some rabbis from uh, Sephardi communities around the world. They used to call him all the time, ask him wow. questions, very complicated questions about uh, all sorts of things. And yes, it's a very, very, it's a big lose, not just for the Sephardi Israeli community. It's a big mm-hmm. lose for the, you know, all the Jewish people who live around, especially the Jewish people who live around in uh, Muslim communities. They used to uh, speak a lot to Rabbi Cohen and, you know, try to understand what to do. And it's a big lose. All right, Yankee Farber, thank you so, so much for joining us again. Thank you.